இந்த பெஸ்டிவல் சீசனுக்கு பிளாக் பஸ்டர் வண்ணங்களில் and uh, yes uh, people measure democracy uh, three indices uh, the world freedom index uh, measures the democrat uh, the economic democratic index measures and the varieties of democracy measure one is from stockholm one is from the economics magazine one is from us now uh, my my critique of the way they measure always is if you look at the world freedom of index uh, the world freedom house the way they measure they say Uh, after 2019 india's democracy has taken a turn for the worse that is the word they give mm-hmm. and very specifically they attribute two things removal of article 370 in kashmir and uh, the nrc in assam the two things they clearly attribute now for the sake of audience who are sitting here they have to understand 1970 when the freedom of index started it was done by one professor asked by his wife for 20 years as a single person i, I just i just want the professor to just follow me for 2 3 minutes and be very happy to hear your argument okay. Uh, 20 years, one professor in 1990, the same professor who started this index, he said, "I measure democracy in a country by my hunch and my belief." Now, all we are asking is, yes, everybody has got a right to measure democracy in a country. We want people to come and measure democracy, and experts like you to say. But the question is, is it actually measured? Hmm. If you look at the Economist Democracy Index unit, it takes its value from the world. freedom of values index from 2012 no survey has happened in india so economist magazine is forced to give 60 questions to experts who grade india's democracy and economist publishes that as india's democratic index i'm only asking the audience and you whether it's a fair way of measuring a democracy maybe it's not maybe i'm just asking i'm answering i'm answering but yeah. when you talk about freedom and other democracy index also what they're trying to say In 2019, in BJP's manifesto, very clearly we said, when we win from 1952, we are saying in our party's manifesto, Article 370 and 35A, we are taking it back. It's very, very funny. A democratic index telling me because of removal of 370, we are giving you a lesser score in democracy. Only after. I am putting the question. I am putting the question. In England, will you accept a girl born in Scotland? If she gets married outside Scotland, she will lose her right to property. We accept it. Not only in India, a girl born, born in Kashmir, a girl, girl born in Kashmir, if she gets married outside Kashmir, she loses the right to property. Article three seventy by removing, we have given her back the property. So democratic index should give us more score for removing. Yes, Viva is saying your answer is about to my question about whether. Democracy has declined as measured by ability to criticize government, and you went. I'm coming to the second point. Very important. Now let me finish. Right. So you went to three seventy. It's not just about three seventy. Reporters without press, reporters without borders, free, free, uh, press freedom index saw India drop fifteen scores. Right. So it's not just about Article three seventy. And actually, think I'm not talking about policies now. And, and again. Democracy is there, but there's a clear correlation between, you know, uh, the ability of a citizen to criticize their government and the information that government hears, and effective governance. Right? This is well shown. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's so, a very important question. Right. So my question to you, which is a question I asked at the start, is: Do you think that there's space to dissent in India? Forget Article 370. Forget the CA. Forget the things that right. I'm talking about the space to criticize government. Is that the same today in India? Uh, we have to appreciate and understand, ma'am. We have to appreciate and understand. In India, anybody is free to. Uh, if you look at all the prime ministers in the world, presidents in the world, and who gets criticized most, and uh, I, I can say it will be prime minister number one. I, I'm not taking it talking parochial. Mm-hmm. People can call <laughs> names. People can call everything. People can abuse his mother. Even when the mother is dead, people can abuse. That is the level to which democracy is there in India. Second, we all appreciate when you say that nobody protest. The formula was taken back because we listen to the people's protest. We all appreciate, and we are a country where our minority brothers and sisters can sit in Delhi on the road, block the traffic for 60, 70 days. Still, they are allowed to protest because of the Citizenship Amendment Act. 
If they have a problem, they can always speak. And India, you just have to understand, it's a very complex country now. And the law and order is a state subject. What happens in Tamil Nadu? Mm -hmm. Tamil Nadu, for example, lies a politician of multiple cases against me. Again, for freedom of speech by the opposite government, I've gone to the Supreme Court and directly stated. Now, we have to appreciate law and order, it is a part of the different state governments. Police is part of that. And attributing everything, what happens in Bengal? Oh, let me put it in Modiji somehow to what? What happens here? Let me put it in uh, Prime Minister somehow. What I'm saying is, can India be a 100% perfect democracy? I don't think any country in the world is 100%. Everybody is improving. All of us are reaching there. All of us, all of us are reaching there. Yeah. But in the trajectory when people say from 2014 it took a turn for the worse, and they start attributing 2019 when they start giving all this data, mm -hmm. that is where I have a problem. Mm -hmm. When free and fair elections happen, people vote. A prime minister is getting voted back to power for the third straight time. That too happening in a very noisy democracy in our country. That too, we got 240 with all humility, we accepted 20 parties, together they got 240. It is unheard of in global politics. 20 parties, together they got 240. One party got 240, but still they say BJP is closer. I don't know what, what mathematics people well, bring to the table. Well, you know, the mathematics are that 95% of <coughs> charges brought up in the UAE that would be a profound fact. UAPA, Unlawful Activity Prevention Act, is a very clear act to prevent terrorism. That is mainly to prevent terrorism. Mm -hmm. And India previously had a very draconian quota act, which is not there. MISA Act was not there. UAPA Act is there. So I'll be very happy to speak further on this, but 100% we can, I mean, anybody who is in India for a longer time, again, I respect your point of view, you are doing very important work, your professors, we need critical inputs from outside people who, who look at India with a fresh set of it's absolutely no question. But my argument to both of you and to the audience who are listening here is, it's not a fair way to sit outside and say that it has deteriorated in our country and right now incubating what is happening in India to 1976 emergency. Now, People speak multiple languages. It's so noisy. Mm -hmm. And anybody can travel outside. And people can come to Oxford and, and criticize India, the opposite party. Such a fact is a very dear friend, is a fantastic politician. No doubt. We respect everybody's view. Mm -hmm. But to say that it has taken a worse after Modiji has come, I don't think it's a very fair assessment. Well, questions. I hope um, that we have a good. In the festival season, blockbuster, one angle. Ramraj tissue, dhoti shirts.